In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 12, verses 4 to 7. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. In this passage, we see the Lord continuing to teach his disciples to avoid the illusion of hypocrisy, the illusion that they should and can uh, live a dual life. In fact, here he reveals another aspect of hypocrisy. He goes into showing the kind of the source of where this hypocrisy comes from. Yesterday we saw how uh, it, you know one aspect was the illusion of a place and a time where God is not. Today he is looking at and bringing up another reason why we live this duality is because of our fear and our concern of what other people think about us, what other people can do to us. He's telling us that, that there should be nothing in our lives, no one in our lives that can coerce us, that can force us to conform. He says, even to the point of death. He says, my friends, and, and it's very important to hear those words first. He calls the disciples his friends. We know that in John 15, he says, there is no greater love than for one to lay down his life for his friends. He's speaking about himself. He's revealing that he himself is not afraid of those who will kill his body. He's telling his disciples to be the same, to have no regard for those who through social conformity would have them to be slaves of their own slavery. He says, do not fear those who will kill the body. Do not fear those who can harm you. And where does this duality come from? Where does this hypocrisy come from? If not from our desire to please others. We are so afraid to stand out. We're so afraid to be different. In fact, we are not just called to be different, but we're called to be fools for the sake of Christ, to, to, to walk in the way of the cross, to walk in the way of those who will kill us, who will harm our bodies, is foolishness. And yet, and yet, he says, my friends, do not fear them. Do not fear them because in fearing them, you are forgetting the one that you really ought to fear. Now, this fear here is a sense of respect and honor and a sense of almost worship and reverence that we give to others. We behave in certain ways out of fear that others would reject us, that others would hurt us, almost a desire to be accepted by people around us, to do the right thing, to be acceptable in our society. Well, we can't do that. That's just too crazy. Well, the Lord tells us, let me tell you whom you should fear, whom you should, you know, take and keep in consideration when you make decisions in your life. He says, fear him who after he has killed is able to cast into hell. I say to you, fear him. Consider him who has our lives, our spiritual lives in his hands, who has our bodies, our minds, our souls, and our hearts in his hands. He lets his sun shine on the good and on the wicked. He says, he is the one that you must consider. He's the one that matters. He's the one that you should revere and honor. And, and sometimes we read this passage and, and sometimes we, 
It sounds like such a terrible and terrifying thing, this this God who wants us to fear him. And it, it, it sometimes even feels contrary to this this you know revelation of God as love. And yet he is just telling us that it is because of his great love for us that that we should know what is good for us. We should know what is life and what is death. And to conform out of fear of those who have no authority over our lives is not life, but rather it is death. It is not blessing, but rather it is curse. He wants us to be free. And in case, you know, we're not sure, he's, although he's telling us to fear him, although he's telling us that, that uh, he has the ability to cast into hell, we see that this is not his desire for us. In fact, he sandwiches all of this with love. First, he calls us his friends, but then he reassures us in verse 6. He, so, he says, Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins, and not one of them is forgotten before God? He's saying, listen, fear him, but not as you would fear a boss on earth, not as fear uh, uh, one who doesn't care about you, who wants to kill you, who wants to murder you, but fear and reverence him, have respect for him, make consideration for him who does not forget you, the one who wants life for you. In fact, the one who is going to lay down his own very life for you. If we read this passage as fear him as one who hates you, it's terrifying. But when we read it in the context, in the revelation of what he's saying, he's saying, fear him, the one who loves you, the one who values you, the one who wants to give you life. This changes absolutely everything. He goes on to say, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. I mean, we can't even do that for ourselves. We can't do that for our children. He's saying that not one hair can fall from our he our heads without him and without his permission. And what does he say? Right after that, do not fear, therefore. Do not fear. One hand he's saying fear. And then the other side he says, do not fear. See, this is our God. This is the one who's teaching us to take into consideration the truth, to keep him in mind, the one who has authority over our life. Yes, he is worthy of reverence, fear, and honor, and respect. But he's also the one who is so in love with us and desires union with us, who desires to, to give us his life, who, de who desires to liberate us from serving uh, uh, people and their opinion. Therefore, do not fear. You are of more value than many sparrows. He's saying, my father and I love you so much more. If we care for the little birds, how much more do we care for you? You who, you know, he, he's saying this on his way to the cross. He's saying this after he set his eyes on Jerusalem. I'm going to close with a, a story that always touched me my whole life when I heard it. It's the story of a, of a, a saint, a modern day saint. His name is Father Peshoy Camel. And, and Father Peshoy was one of those people who was so filled with love. His ministry uh, changed and transformed the whole city of Alexandria. In fact, all of Egypt and outside of Egypt, a number of uh, priests uh, see him as their mentor, uh, uh, as a model of what it means to truly be a priest. I mean, there's so many beautiful stories in his life. Uh, he, his service was just unconditional love for everyone. He was on fire all the time for the Lord. One of the things he did is, is he asked the Lord that he would be granted to um, suffer for him, and specifically having seen so many people suffer through cancer, he asked the Lord uh, to uh, to be given the gift, as it were, of cancer. One day, his wife, I mean, in the Orthodox Church, priests get uh, married. So one day his wife was so sad after his 
receiving his chemotherapy, she, he could see in her face that she was sad. So he said to her, come here, come and see, look, look, look how much time God is spending on me. See these hairs that are falling out of my head. Not one of them can fall without permission from God. Look at how much time he is spending on me. Every one of my hairs is numbered. This is the love of the God who wants us to be free, to not to conform, but rather may we have that faith to know that that we are of great value to him, such great value that he'd be willing to lay down his life for us. May today be a day we stop living out of fear of suffering, out of fear of bodily harm, out of fear of social rejection. May today be a day of courage, rather that we may live with God in mind, knowing that he sees us as valuable, that, that, that he counts the very hairs of our head, and that he keeps us and, and in, in loving memory, He remembers us all day long. Have a beautiful day.